Welcome to our midweek devotional from Church of the Good Shepherd. We are so glad you have joined us today. The title of our devotional is Breaking Down the Barriers. In many churches, small groups or cliques can form, often unintentionally. While it's natural to gravitate towards those with similar interests or backgrounds, these divisions can hinder the unity Christ calls us to embrace. Cliques can make newcomers feel unwelcome and create a sense of an exclusionary mindset within the congregation. This goes against the inclusive nature of Christ's love and the early church's example of radical community. As followers of Christ, we're called to break down these barriers. Jesus himself crossed social boundaries, engaging with people from all walks of life. He showed us that God's love knows no favorites. Cliques are an unfortunate reality in many social settings, including the church. While it's natural for people to form close friendships, cliques can create barriers that exclude others and hinder the unity of the body of Christ. When we allow cliques to form, we fail to reflect the inclusive love of Christ and miss out on the richness of fellowship with a diverse group of believers. This devotional encourages us to recognize and dismantle cliques, fostering a welcoming and loving community where everyone feels valued. Our Focus Scripture Readings Our first scripture comes from James, chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. My brothers and sisters, believers in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ must not show favoritism. Suppose a person comes into your meeting wearing a gold ring and fine clothes, and a poor person in filthy old clothes also comes in. If you show special attention to the person wearing fine clothes and say, Here's a good seat for you, but say to the poor person, you stand there, or is it on the floor by my feet? Have you not discriminated among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? And from 1 Corinthians, chapter 1, verse 10. I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree with one another so that there may be no divisions among you and that you may be perfectly united in mind and thought. Understanding the impact of cliques and the call to love without favoritism. Cliques, by nature, are exclusive groups that often form based on shared interests, backgrounds, or social status. While forming friendships is healthy, cliques become harmful when they create divisions within the church. When we gravitate only toward those who are like us, we unintentionally exclude others and limit the diversity and richness of fellowship that God desires for His people. Romans, chapter 12, verse 16 instructs us to live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. We are also called to love without favoritism. James, chapter 2, verses 1 through 4 warns against showing favoritism, which is at the heart of click behavior. Favoritism goes against the very nature of Christ's love which is inclusive and impartial. In Galatians, chapter 3, verse 28, Paul reminds us, There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. The church is called to be a place where everyone, regardless of background, is welcomed and valued. We must be intentional in loving others without favoritism, ensuring that our church community reflects the inclusive love of Christ. Breaking down barriers and embracing unity in diversity. To break down the barriers that cliques create, we must be proactive in reaching out to others. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 2 encourages us, do not forget to show hospitality to strangers, for by so doing some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. Hospitality is a powerful way to combat cliques, as it opens the door to new relationships and makes others feel valued. We should look for opportunities to invite those who are new or feel left out into our circles, extending the love of Christ to all. The body of Christ is beautifully diverse, and this diversity is a strength, not a weakness. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12-14 through 14 says, just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one Spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given the one Spirit to drink. 
Even so, the body is not made up of one part but of many. Embracing unity and diversity means valuing and celebrating the differences among us, knowing that each person brings something unique and valuable to the community. Creating a welcoming environment As followers of Christ, we are called to create a welcoming environment where everyone feels they belong. Romans, chapter 15, verse 7 instructs us, accept one another, then, just as Christ accepted you, in order to bring praise to God. This means going out of our way to make others feel included, whether it's inviting someone new to join a group, sitting with someone who is alone, or simply being open to forming new friendships. By doing so, we reflect the love and acceptance of Christ, making our church a place where everyone can grow and thrive. Consider your own relationships within the church. Are there people you gravitate toward to the exclusion of others? Are there individuals or groups you've unintentionally overlooked? Ask God to open your eyes to the opportunities around you to reach out and include those who may feel left out. Reflect on how you can be more intentional in fostering a welcoming and inclusive community. Consider the following. 1. Are there groups in your church that seem closed off to others? 2. Have you ever felt excluded in a church setting? How did it impact your faith journey? 3. In what ways can you actively work to make your church more inclusive? This week, make an effort to connect with someone in your church you don't know well. Invite them to join your group for lunch or coffee after the service. Small gestures can go a long way in fostering unity and breaking down barriers. Let us pray. Loving God, thank you for the diverse and beautiful body of Christ. Forgive us for the times we have allowed cliques to form, excluding others from the fellowship you desire for us all. Help us to love without favoritism and to break down the barriers that divide us. Open our hearts to those who feel left out and give us the courage to reach out and include them. May our church be a place of unity, where everyone feels valued and loved. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. Cliques have no place in the church, where Christ's love is meant to be inclusive and impartial. As we recognize the impact of cliques, we are called to break down these barriers and create a welcoming environment where everyone is valued. Let us be intentional in loving others, reaching out to those who may feel excluded, and embracing the diversity within the body of Christ. In doing so, we reflect the heart of God and build a stronger, more unified church community. So what do you do when you feel left out at church? In Ephesians, chapter 2, verses 19 through 20, we read, Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. Feeling left out or excluded at church can be a deeply painful experience. It's a place where we expect to find community, acceptance, and love, yet sometimes we find ourselves on the outside looking in. This disconnect can shake our faith and make us question our place in God's family. But the truth is, in God's eyes, we are never outsiders. Through Christ, we have been adopted into his family. We are fellow citizens and members of his household. This belonging isn't based on our social skills, background, or how well we fit in with others. It's founded on Christ himself. When we feel left out, it's important to remember that our true identity and acceptance come from God, not from the approval or inclusion of others. At the same time, this experience can make us more sensitive to others who might feel excluded, allowing us to extend the welcome we ourselves long for. Consider the following. 1. Have you ever felt left out at church? How did it affect your relationship with God and others? 2. In what ways can you remind yourself of your place in God's family when you feel excluded? 3. How can your experience help you be more inclusive of others who might feel left out? This week, if you're feeling left out, take a step towards connection. Introduce yourself to someone new, or reach out to a church leader about getting more involved. If you're comfortable in your church community, look for someone who might be on the fringes and make an effort to include them. 
Let us go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, when I feel left out or alone, remind me that I am your child, fully accepted and loved. Help me find my identity and worth in you, not in the approval of others. Give me the courage to reach out when I feel isolated, and the compassion to include others who might be feeling the same. May our church truly reflect your inclusive love. In Jesus' name, Amen. Remember, you are a vital part of God's family, and your presence matters. This is a powerful reminder of the importance of each individual in the body of Christ. It emphasizes belonging, significance, and the unique contribution that every person brings to the community. This message reassures that no one is overlooked, and everyone plays an essential role in God's family. Thank you for joining us for our midweek devotional. We hope you come back next week. And now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit remind you daily that you are cherished and chosen by God. As you go about your day, may you carry with you the assurance that every person you encounter belongs to God, just as you do. Let this truth guide your steps, shape your words, and inspire your actions. May you see the divine image in everyone, honoring the sacredness of each life. And may the peace of Christ fill your heart as you walk in love and unity, knowing that we are all part of God's beautiful and diverse family. Amen.